Welcome back to the Healthy Aging Show. This is Dr. Michael Perskin. Now we're going to talk about perioperative uh, care and a guide for the care of senior uh, patients uh, from the American Geriatric Society and others. Uh, the American College of Surgeons are the others. And we're going to talk about the special needs for seniors um, with Dr. Clifford Coe and Dr. Ronnie Rosenthal. So Dr. Rosenthal, wh what did you guys do in the Geriatric Surgery Task Force? Did you did you prioritize what you thought the gaps were in, in the care based on the data that you had? Yeah, well, the, the, one of the problems is that the, the quality of the data for older patients so far is not that good. I mean, there are some areas where it's good and some areas where it's lacking. So what we did in, this, um, in the um, task force to develop the basic principles for our standards is we actually uh, thought about the things that were most important that that we identified as most important with a group of um, experts around the table in order to provide outstanding care. So we, <clears throat> we looked at what the gaps in the data were, but we also looked at what we know already, and we put them together into categories and then sort of expanded on those so that we could get as much information possible. Okay, and so what, what, what's a, a, an example of what a gap was in the data? Well, one of the things that's, a, that's probably a gap in the data and also a gap in how we provide uh, care is understanding what patients' goals of treatment are and whether or not we are providing care that's consistent with those goals. I really thought that the, um, what was in your guidelines were excellent. And in fact, here at, at my uh, medical center at NYU, we actually have a delirium task force and we're using that as a basis of some of our next steps. Right. So um, I, I will have to say that so there are delirium guidelines that were recently um, uh, published, right? And that's what you're talking about, that the American Geriatric Society yeah. and with some uh, – it was multidisciplinary with people around the table putting in their uh, expertise into this um, that uh, they developed. And it was very in informative in that – uh, number one, it kind of sheds a light on the whole topic so that people start recognizing it that just like, oh, that just uh, that just happens and we just accept it. But really, um, what is the risk for it happening? How do we recognize it if it does happen? How do we do things to prevent it from happening if the risk is high? And if it does happen, what are the things we should be doing? And so those four things are, are very important for – um, for for providers and families and 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 everyone to recognize and, and to figure out how we can do things better and so the guidelines are very helpful in that in in all those areas of of just seeing who's at high risk are there what can we do about those things um, what should we do when they when they do happen and and I think that it's tying it back to the coalition. Uh, and having standards, it, it's it's to really raise the tide, lift all boats to address post, the potential post-op delirium uh, in, in that regard. I think that the surgical community, the community of physical therapists, nursing is really focused on this. And I know right. you, you mentioned the Hartford Foundation has funded some of this research, and one of their strategic initiatives is is the um, age-friendly hospital. Right. Uh, currently, and, and you know, these sorts of things have to happen. We have to make it easy to get the person to walk around after surgery, right? And, right. And that's sort of a goal, and so this is great work to make that happen. Well, uh, Dr. Ko, Dr. Rosenthal, thank you so much thank for you. coming on the show to explain these these uh, guidelines and the work that you guys are doing, which is really important to improve the quality of care for older Americans uh, after surgery.